It's a helpless two-year-old. He's tiny and can't fight back. He doesn't know where he's at, doesn't know where mommy and daddy are because we're the only two people that he knows. Two-year-old Amari Nichols is still missing, and today volunteers are trying to find him. The boy was last seen Wednesday morning near Paradise in Twain. Metro Police say anyone who wants to help can check in. On April 30th, Taylor Nicholson would board a flight from Nevada to Colorado to help her mother around the house due to an injury she had recently suffered. She left her two-year-old son in the care of his stepfather to rail roads until she returned, not knowing it would be her very last time ever seeing him alive. This is the story of Amari Nicholson. In the early morning hours of May 5th, 2021, Amari's mother was still in Colorado caring for her mother when she would receive a phone call from her then boyfriend, Terrell Rhodes, that would change her life forever. Terrell stated that a woman claiming to be the sister of Amari's father had come by the apartment to pick him up. Amari's mother informed him that she had not sent anyone there to get the child. In a panic, she hung up and immediately called the Nevada Police Department. Okay, who's missing that you know? My son. How old's your son? He'll be three in October. Where did you last see him? My apartment. Somebody came knocking on the door. My boyfriend thought it was related to us, and she ran out the door with my baby. Okay, what address did this happen at? Um, it's the Emerald Suite, Building J, off the Convention Center of Paradise Basin Place. I'm okay. in Colorado visiting my mom right now, so I'm not in Vegas. As Taylor tried convincing Nevada police to issue an Amber Alert, the department did not see the need to do so at first because the information they were receiving was painting the picture as a custody battle for Amari. Upset, she dropped everything she was doing and was on the next flight to Nevada. Taylor was back in Nevada within hours. Upon arrival, she immediately dialed 911 again to try and get an Amber Alert set out for Amari. Listen as she explains the events leading up to his disappearance. Metro Dispatch, how can I help you? Hi, Amari, I called you guys earlier this morning around 6 in the morning. My name is Taylor Nicholson, and I had tried to report an Amber Alert, but I was out of town, and so my son has been gone for half the day, and the police haven't been looking for him because they said that they're taking it as a civil matter until they're able to talk to me in person. Okay. Did you... So there, I'm in town now. I just got off the plane. I'm at home. Is there a way that dispatch is able to come back out to talk to try to get the Amber Alert back? And when did you report this? Today? At six, 6.30 in the morning. Okay. Um, let me find the event. Just give me one second, okay? Okay. Okay, so ma'am, who has your child? I don't know. Uh, I was, my boyfriend said that a lady was knocking on the door this morning at 6 and said that she was my baby daddy's sister and said that um, she was there to pick him up, that everything was already pre prearranged, and I spoke to nobody. That second 911 call would prompt an Amber Alert, as well as a massive search for the toddler. Taylor and her then boyfriend would appear on the local news, pleading for the child's safe return. Community members began to speculate whether the child's mother was involved or not. The community was in outrage. Five reporters for days telling everyone the biological aunt of Amari took the little boy. We questioned him about the baby's disappearance a few days ago, and this is part of that interview. And what did she say to you? I mean, did you talk to her? The um, only words that we had were that she was there to pick up my stepson and that she already had talked to my girlfriend about it. So when I turned around to go pack his bags up, get his do belongings together. She already said that she didn't need anything. They had everything for him, and that was it. During the investigation into the disappearance of Amari, police were able to eliminate the paternal father and his family members of any wrongdoing, and a clearer picture of a suspect would emerge.
Police brought in Terrell Rhodes for questioning, the then boyfriend of Amari's mother, where he would not only confess to the murder of Amari, but would draw them a map leading directly to his lifeless body. Prosecutors presented this video to the grand jury to file additional charges against Terrell Rhodes. Rhodes is accused of killing two-year-old Amari Nicholson, then hiding his body outside a hotel near the Strip. At the start of this video, you can see he is trying to get his hand cut off right here. Metro Police say the video was taken inside an interview room shortly after Rhodes confessed to killing the toddler. You can hear Rhodes seem to cry, and then things take a violent turn. So we want to stop it right there for you. You can see Rhodes grab for an officer's gun and actually get a hold of it. Then the fight is on. Officers shouting Rhodes has a gun and other officers joining in, screaming at him to drop it. That female officer there, she punches Rhodes several times in the head. And finally, officers are able to get that gun away from him. Now, at various points, you can hear Rhodes screaming as the police take that weapon away. This entire video, just about two minutes long, and coming up at five, we'll show you more from this video and a map that Rhodes made that led police to the boy's body. Mama, I see no. No. All too often, I see females that get involved with men and bring them into their children's lives almost suddenly. I get it, being a single mother sucks, but being a mother of a murdered or molested child is preventable. Amari had no business being left alone with that animal. I pray he never sees the light of day. Rest easy, Amari. You've touched many lives.